evening, folks, we'll call tonight's regularly scheduled select board meeting to order at 6 p.m. With us tonight is Joe Staub on my left and Tor Nelson on my right. Carla Nuizo may be joining us via Zoom. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started. So we'll call the meeting to order. And are there any additions or changes to the agenda tonight, Tor? Uh, no. Okay. Any public comment? Hearing none, we'll move forward. So the first item on the agenda is the EV charging proposal at the Town Hall campus. Okay, we got uh, Rose from Flow uh, Chargers Online. Uh, welcome, Rose. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me all right? Yep, yes. sounding good. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you, Rose. Excellent. Can you see me um, for the folks who are in the, the, the town office? Yes, Am I on a screen? Okay, great. It's very, very good. I was just wondering what the setup was. Um, well, good evening, everybody. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to present to you all today. My name is Rose, and I lead the governmental sales team at Flow, which is an EV charging station manufacturer and network provider. Flow is uh, originally a Canadian company. We were founded in 2009, uh, started building charging stations by 2012. And today we have the largest charging station network in Canada and the third largest network in the United States. So we, um, as background on what we're looking to do, Flow was chosen as a preferred vendor by the state of Vermont to help deploy charging stations in locations across the state. There was an RFI process to pick vendors for the project. Flow responded to the, um, excuse me, there was an RFP. Flow responded to the RFP and were, were chosen. And so now we are in the process of um, of, of speaking to different select boards and council people across the state, as well as working with a number of private sector companies as well to deploy charging stations that meet the requirements and criteria of the state's grant called NEVI, the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Grant Program. Um, I had um, worked before um, and, and, and sent out, I'm, I'm not sure if everybody has seen it, but Flow created a um, an ROI breakdown of what this type of project would cost the town of Berlin, first out of um, out of pocket costs, and then on uh, longer term the the, the ROI, the um, the investment on on the, on the purchase, um, and and the type of money that the town could make back by deploying charging stations. So I, I'd like to talk about that um, tonight, but but before I, I wanna, um, I have a video with me. I'm not sure if it's going to show well because of the sound, but if possible, I, I would like to show it um, so that you all can see the charging station that we are, Flow wants to deploy um, at, the, at the town town location. I will say, but before I show this video, and if it doesn't work, we'll, we'll move on. Um, Flow's first partner in the United States was Green Mountain Power. We have, we, we started a relationship with them in about 2017, 2018, and we have since maintained a very Recording strong relationship in progress. with the utility. And um, they were actually the first customer of Flows for the entire United States to purchase this charging station from us. And they are now in the process of deploying these charging stations across the state of Vermont um, at GMP owned locations. So uh, that, um, you know, th this is a, this is a tested station. You know, we've got really strong relationships across the state. This is not, this won't be the first time we're deploying this specific unit. It definitely is not the first time Flow is deploying charging stations in Vermont. Um, so I'll show this video and then we can talk a little bit more about the grant and then I'll talk about the ROI calculator. So I'm going to share my screen. Oh, thank it you. Says, Rose. It says host has disabled participant screen sharing. If that's the case, that's okay. Let me. It's okay. It's okay. We. Well, um, I can send it out via email after after this. Well, maybe try, um, try it again real quick. 
Okay. Oh, yep, there we go. All right. So this is about a two minute long video. Please interrupt me if it doesn't work. I'm finalizing the pre-charge tests. You can see that there's a little bit of Can you all hear it? No. No. Okay. We okay, can that's... see it, but we can't hear it. Okay, that's fine. Then I'm just going to talk to you about what you're seeing. So what you're seeing right now is the Flow Ultra Station. Um, this is a, you know what? I'm actually going to show you a different video if you can't hear it. All right. Well, first off, while I'm pulling that up, this is, this is a photo of the charging station that we are looking to deploy. This is called the Flow Ultra. It is in the process of being installed. That's why this is open and there's a man on the ground with a <laughs> with a uh, with a tool <laughs> to get it installed. We built this charging station specifically for Nevi, specifically for the grant program that the state of Vermont has approved Flow to move forward with. Um, this is a charging station that can charge two vehicles simultaneously. Each vehicle would be receiving 160 kilowatts uh, at a time. There's two screens here. There's two ports for two vehicles to charge, like I said, simultaneously. You can see that by it says A1 and A2. Um, there's screens available for, um, for touch screen, for people to easily understand how to use the station. It's written clearly. Once the station is turned on, it's clearly written. It's available in several different languages that you can choose from um, so that you can read the screen. There's a credit card uh, feeder at the, at the front. So you can do, you can do a swipe, you can do tap to pay, you can pay with your phone. Um, you can pay if you have a, like a charge point or have a flow app, you can pay that way. Uh, and the charging station itself is, um, it's really built for all types of EV drivers to, have, to, to easily utilize. We did a ton of testing. We interviewed over 5,000 drivers before we built this charging station. And what we heard over and over again was that charging stations today are unwieldy. It's difficult to use. It's complicated. People don't understand how to start a session. And then once they start a session, the cables themselves are very heavy and difficult to get into the vehicle. So we've built an automated cable management system. As soon as you take the port out of the, the holster and you um, walk to plug it into your vehicle, the automatic cable management system will kick in and will take off all of the weight of, from the cable to make it easy for anybody to charge. This is uh, especially useful for um, for like folks that are a little bit older that are that are using the 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 stations. I know my mom would 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 like this. That is that she doesn't have to pick up something heavy to to plug it in. Um, so we we really took in uh, the the customer experience in all different ways that we have built this station. So I, I, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I wanna talk a little bit more about this grant that we're applying, that we, we hope to apply for. The state has received money from the federal government to pay for charging infrastructure. The grant will pay for 80% of project costs to cover um, to cover expenses. And the 20% delta, we are looking for the municipality to cover the costs of. Um, the ROI calculator that I built was using um, the highest possible costs that we could imagine in order to be as, we wanted to be realistic, um, but we also wanted to um, make sure that there was no like no hidden fees that would come later. What I'm hoping to do and what I'm hoping to, to how I'm hoping to move forward is that Flo wants to apply for this grant um, on behalf of the town. If the town wins, and, and that's a big if, then we can talk about, um, you know, like, 
making sure that the costs are as low as possible for for the town in the ROI calculator that I sent the um, the return on investment is uh, about a three year period. The town is not obligated to move forward with the grant if let's say you win and um, you find out later at a later time that you're not interested in actually deploying the charging stations anymore. All that I'm hoping to, to get out of this and hoping to do is to submit an application on your behalf. And if the town wins, I mean, like I said, it's a big if, then we can figure out all of the specifics later, but at least you'd have the money in hand to be able to potentially deploy the project. Understood. Thank you, Rose. So um, I, that's a ton of information. I've been talking for the last 10 minutes. I'm gonna pause there and maybe we can just go over any questions that you folks might have either about the charging station um, or the, the grant process or flows role, whatever it might be. What is the date you need to submit the application? For the that's grant. A, that's a great question. Um, and the grant is due um, the grant is due fairly soon. I will get you an exact answer to that in just a moment. I'm pulling it up. Thank you. So you said there was a, a three year, an estimated three year payback. That's correct. Okay, and that's based off how many, let's say vehicles or kilowatts or how are you, you judging that? That's a, a really good question, and I will pull that up for you. So we we anticipated your site having um, a, a moderate utilization level, um, somewhere between maybe um, two sessions to eight sessions a day. Um, some days we'll likely have less sessions than that, and some days we'll have more sessions than that. But we were very conservative about how how many vehicles we thought would actually be using um, be using the stations because we we wanted to it's better to have, it's better to find out that you're going to have more utilization later than than less um, at the same time flow pays for a number of software programs that help us identify um, utilization anticipated utilization and we plugged the address in and those platforms um, gave us a similar response to what we had. Uh, hypothesized. Do you what, have any? Go ahead. I was going to say, what's your what's your nearest location to ours? Comfort Inn. The Comfort Inn. Six hundred feet. That's that was the question I was going to ask. Is do you have any type of? I don't know. I sort of want to call them a non compete agreements or but any kind of stipulations in your agreements, you know, as to how a minimum distance between chargers or anything we we don't um because right now in vermont the majority of our stations are level two stations they they look like this um and this might even be one that you're familiar with seeing and so the use cases for people um interacting with level two stations in dcs are, are quite different a dc station um you're going to have be pulling people off of the the highway corridor that that um, runs nearby. And so they're gonna be charging quickly and then getting back on the highway and going back to their destination. Level two stations, you'll see more people who are parked for longer periods of time, like at a workplace or um, or, uh, or a hotel or a motel where they're gonna be parking overnight. Um, so we, we like to, uh, you know, we like to deploy our charging stations as a, in as many places as possible, um, but we don't have uh, we don't have rules about um, like non competes for for deployment. Okay, so there'd be no issue with there being a flow charger station six hundred feet away as a crow flies from here. I, I don't. We wouldn't. We wouldn't have an issue with it that. Be, I, be, I, I, it's a Green Mountain. I think it's a Green Mountain Power installed flow charging station but okay so I, I looked it up and the due date for proposals is next week on the 23rd 
So it would be next Monday. So we're looking for a response as soon as possible on if this is something you're interested in moving forward with or not to give our team adequate time to author the proposal. We, quite frankly, we've started already because we didn't want to have, like we've started building site layouts and, and plans because we didn't want to wait completely to the last minute, but we will not, we, we cannot, we legally cannot submit without your approval. And um, so if you say no, we'll just put everything in the, you know, in the, in the recycle bin on our computers um, if, if, if there's not approval to move forward with this. Thank you, Rose. Thank you for your time and efforts. And is there any other what, questions from the Yeah. Um, oh. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. What do you anticipate in the future as far as additional grant opportunities for A, if we don't apply this year or if we are not awarded this year, do you anticipate additional opportunities in the future? Good question. So there are five years of NEVI, um, five years to get chargers deployed. If um, so how it works is the state has corridors and they um, if a if a charger is installed in a corridor, that corridor is taken off the list and it's no longer eligible for funding. So if so, somebody within your area will put in a charging station. It's either going to be the town of Berlin or, um, you know, maybe Montpelier or some somebody else um, along that corridor. So it's really a question of like if you want to be the ones to secure the funding or if somebody else will be the ones to secure the funding. Um, after all of the, the corridors are filled and um, we you know the stations are deployed, the state will consider other locations to to double dip. Um, does that answer your question? Yes. Is there any way to pull up what the usage? of the charger at the Comfort Inn is? So I, I went so, by there several times this week and I never saw any, anybody there, um, you know, except for, except for this morning. Um, so the short answer is no, because the Comfort Inn owns the charger and so they own the data of, from the charging station as well. And um, it's a breach of privacy if I share their data okay. with, with anybody else. Um, but I believe it's a level two station at that low, at that site. Is that correct? It's like a smaller station. I would. I don't know for sure. I don't know enough about the okay. stations. You got to tell you a difference. It's okay. I'll I'll look it up. But I believe it's a level two station. I believe it looks like this one. Um, um and. I'm not surprised that people aren't using it so often because people don't want to chart, people don't want to park at a comfort inn for four or five hours at a time if that's not their final destination. If they're trying to go to work or go to the grocery store, the co-op or, or something like that, it's not convenient to park at that that charger and then walk somewhere else. Also, if if people ha have an EV, it's likely that at home they have a, a level two station themselves. Like they have a charging station that they can use. Um, this DC fast charger that we're hoping to deploy is more suited for um, people off of the highway. So people traveling longer distances and coming into um, the town charging, maybe getting a bite to eat or going to get a cup of coffee or something while they're charging and then coming back, picking up their car and then getting back on the highway. So what is the time frame how this grant works? It, you know, if you have to submit the application next week, um, when will you learn if you're awarded this, you know, the, uh, the award? And then, you know, what's the construction timeline from there? That's a good question. So we're in middle of September now. Um, Hopefully we'll hear back by January, ideally. It might take the state a little bit longer. Um, we're not doing any construction work until after the ground unfreezes, thaws. Um, so ideally, and, and it's all up to the state, but if the state had, if the state 
awards funding by let's say fe fe February, January, February, um, it'll probably take um, between nine to 12 months to get the site ready. Um, and so we would be looking at re realistically a probably like a spring of 26 deployment. It, these are long projects. They take a really long time and they take a lot of approval from different stakeholders. Um, so that's, that's my best guess. I, it could be a little bit shorter of a timeline than that, but I, um, I'd rather overestimate than underestimate. Thank you, Rose. And so then, okay. Um, yeah, because we don't have any funds appropriated this year, but we would have time to put on our next town meeting ballot the question as if the town wants to move for you know move forward with appropriating the the match. Um, you know, assuming we get awarded the the grant. I think it's important to remember that my goal for this meeting is where I'm not trying to get a contract signed tonight. I'm just trying to apply for the funding and hope to get it secured so that in January, February, March, or whenever the the state announces their awardees, you can decide, yes, this is something we want to move forward with, or no, we don't want to move forward with it. And then the funding would be allocated to a different um, a different site. Uh, for, for somebody else in the state to be able to deploy it if, if you folks decided it wasn't something you wanted to move forward with. And the option for the yes or no at that time would be built into the contract as well? But sure, yeah, because you're never obligated to sign a contract if you, if you don't want to. Exactly. Okay. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Tom, would you like to discuss? Hello, Rose. Tom Badowski, if I can't see me, but uh, thank you for joining today. Uh, I, I believe the out-of-pocket expense in your ROI was $90,000. Is that correct? I, and that's, that, that's right. Um, something to know about that is we were we were assuming the highest costs possible. Like We assumed that Green Mountain Power would provide little to no funding to help bring in power to a site. So we assume that they their costs would be about $100,000, if not more than that. We also marked up the station price itself at the highest possible level. Um, but if you went through this, like there's opportunities to lower the cost by 20 or $30,000 on the hardware side. So right there, there's, you know, th th there's a lot of wiggle room for ways to bring the cost down. We built the estimate without actually getting quotes from an electrical contractor or an engineering firm. So our the, the numbers that we were inputting were um, educated guesses. So yes, it's $90,000, but that's at the highest amount that it would be. What do you need from us to complete your application packet? We I, know, need... I know Tom's been sending a lot of information. Yeah. Um, Anything else that you need from us, or we need the go ahead. We need we need the approval. Um, what what will happen is we'll we'll write up all of the documents. Um, we'll create all of the narrative, which you know we already have uh, a portion of, and uh, the all of the mapping, answering all of the state's questions, and then we'll give it. We'll submit it to um, somebody at the town, maybe Tom, um, and that person will submit it to, to, it will will email the state the the application um and that'll just need to happen before um 3 p.m on the 23rd which is 3 p.m next monday um is that another password tom's gonna have to get <laughs> just to, to log into that system because <laughs> that's a no go know. right i'm tom shaking his head right now that's a three day long process. No, we, we can, we can, we can oh, that's, try, try that's to short for Tom. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, but that's, that's what we would need because we, we can't submit it on behalf of the town. The town would have to submit it. Um, but we, we're going to write everything and, and, and do all of the legwork. We just need somebody to actually press the send button. Is that, Does time, that time frame for, good? I was just going to ask the same thing. <laughs> good for you, Tom. I don't know what, where it's going, but. I, the answer is yes. Two things I'd like to just inform the select board on. 
we did have a conversation earlier uh, uh, in, in the month, or maybe last month, that a, a possibility of some of, uh, funding is, is if the town would, starts to convert their fleets, particularly the, the, the police, to EVs, um, you know, the, the state is offering a $20,000 grant for each of those vehicles now. And they also estimated on a, on a uh, fuel savings, it's about $2,000 per vehicle per year. So, uh, and I was just on a, a, a phone call with Central Front Regional Planning Commission before I came out here. You may recall uh, Joe and Tor that the town participated in a uh, energy study on, on the public uh, service building and this building. Uh, they are making available $500,000 grants per municipality to, uh, to uh, uh, facilitate those initiatives in those, in those uh, uh, reports that, we, that you guys got sent to you last week. There's, there's a prioritization of, of uh, projects, uh, building envelopes, weatherization, fuel switching, but they also, and those are primary, uh, but they also will uh, do EV charging stations and they also will do solar generation. As you know, we have a solar generation project here uh, under consideration. So there may be, there's no guarantee, it's a competitive process, uh, but there may be uh, uh, some funds available that could go, uh, you're, you're asking about additional grants that may be able to go to, to the EV stations. And, though, and that application is due September 27. Thank you, Tom. Any questions for Tom or additional questions for Rose? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I move that we apply through flow for a Disnevi grant thing. <laughs> Do I hear a second? Yeah, second. Any discussion? Moved. Thank you, Rose. You Thank vote. you very much, Thank Rose. You. Oh, all Thank those you. in favor. Just Aye. all those in favor. Aye. Thank you very much. And thank you, Aye. Rose. Thank you, everybody. Um, um, we will. Tomorrow. Pictures exactly. Okay, cool. Fantastic. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Have a wonderful evening. You too. Thanks. And thanks for your input, Tom. Oh, no. Oh, we'll take the time to get reconnected. Oh, I wonder what caused that. Because she was still the host. <laughs> oh. Would she need to come back on? Would Tom need to come no. on? No. Uh, Jumping in now. We were just disconnected from Zoom, but we're reconnecting now. I think you're going to hit the blue button, Diane. I'm sorry, what? Hit the join button or something up there. Oh, uh, with a key, with a... No, you got to use a mouse. mouse. We're not oh, that uh, sophisticated. Use the touch screen. Let her touch you, don't embarrass me. Yeah, no, uh, from Is that the meeting ID? Yeah. Just do the drop down Tell me to mute Town this. of Berlin personal meeting. What was that, sir? We well, don't need to mute the camera for the password. Uh, no. No, that's okay. Thank you for asking, though. No. Zero three zero five one nine. Zero three zero five one nine. Yeah.
Recording in progress. Oh, yeah, you got Carl and stuff. Thank you, everyone. You got to get on mute. Yep, we're blue, and Carla has joined us. Thank you, everyone, and it's nice to see you as well, Carla. We're going to continue Hi. with the meeting. Hello. Hi there. Just wanted to let you know that I can hear you. I couldn't before. Glad you can hear us now. Can everyone hear us okay? I'm assuming so. Yeah. And we're going to go on now to discuss the fraud prevention policy draft. Uh, so this was a recommendation uh, from our fiscal year 23 audit. Um, it's, it was not a finding, but it was a recommendation that we implement a fraud policy, um, which include the pages from the audit in your packet. Uh, so this is the uh, model fraud policy from the league. Um, I've taken the very preliminary steps of uh, completing it for our town, but I left the guidance in place for you, um, you know, so you can see what they're looking at and then the, you know, what the draft would actually look like. Um, I've not circulated this to, you know, the internal staff yet, um, but if you have any thoughts on this, let me know and then we'll start putting in our agenda for uh, the next meeting for uh, review and approval. So let's just give you an advance to uh, start reading up on it. That's wonderful. Thank you for Thank taking you. the time to do that tour and for giving us the time. And we'll put that on the next agenda. Thank you so much. Any questions for tour before we move on? Okay. Good. And now next on the agenda is the vacant buildings ordinance draft. So it looks like this has been under review for a while. Um, I know Vince brought it up about a year and a half ago, and it, last time I remember it being brought up, and it didn't really go, any, go anywhere then. Um, I think I made the wrong copy here. Um, Have you but with some, with some uh, occurrences that have happened over the past couple of weeks. This is the one we should be looking at, right? No, I don't think it's <laughs> the one we should be looking at. No. I sent it on email, but I didn't print it out. Okay. Um, I did receive it by think, email and reviewed it. Um, but I think it's time to start, well, I think it's time to start considering looking at this again. Um, you know, we have a number of properties that were damaged in the flood and they're still uh, vacant to this day, uh, leading to a lot of vandalism, trespassing, and uh, even a fire, uh, what, 10 days ago, just about, about. 10 days ago. Um, so I, so I haven't, you know, so like I said, I included in your packet the drafted we were looking at. Uh, I also reached out to some of the neighboring uh, or some of the uh, statewide, some of the uh, municipalities this morning and uh, Barry City sent me a copy of their ordinance uh, and Montpelier does not have a vacant building ordinance itself, uh, but Bill Frazier felt that their nuisance uh, ordinance um, you know, would cover the, the uh, appropriate uh, instances. Uh, St. Johnsbury replied <clears throat> that they um, used the, you know, they based their ordinance off of the Barry City ordinance. Um, and the other question I had was, you know, difficulties in enforcing that. Uh, both Barry City and St. John's Barry stated that they use code enforcement officer to enforce these, which we don't have. Um, it looks to me that the um, deputy fire chief in Barry City is basically the primary code enforcement officer, Joel Altsworth. 
um, which between our zoning, our zoning administrator and not having a full-time firefighter on staff at this point, I think would limit our ability to enforce something like this. Um, if we do implement an ordinance like this, I think it does need to be enforceable, um, you know, because otherwise it's just good advice. Mm -hmm. When I read um, through it, I definitely thought that it needs to be enforceable, and I questioned the fact that we didn't have someone either at this time. Not to say that we couldn't in the future. Now, you know, with the possible changes coming up in the fire department in the future, I mean, you know, um, I'd call more medium term, you know, not short term, but not long term, you know, the, the possibility of hiring a full time chief. Mm -hmm. um, that would provide us some flexibility then. Um, but as of today, um, I just don't know that we have the capacity to enforce, you know, something like this. Um, I don't know what your thoughts are. I mean, you, you, you've so, got a better handle on the need for something like this. So I, I remember having these conversations with Vince, um, and, and we do. We have, we have a number of buildings, and this is well before the flooding, that, that are, are vacant. Um, and, and I really felt the need. Um, I think he, he did dust it off and start working on it, um, talking with Joe, uh, Joe Walsworth in Barry City. Um, there. We didn't get into, you know, the ease of enforcement, uh, but it has, I'm going to say, lessened the, um, the abandoned buildings and, and putting a little more onus on, on the owner to keep it at a certain grade, if you want to call it. Um, I think we, we could probably work this where we felt comfortable with it and not implement it, but have it ready to be implemented. Mm -hmm. Sound right? Mm -hmm. So I guess what I would recommend is, um, you know, we look through these other communities, their ordinances, and if I get any more in, I'll pass them along. And then at our next meeting, we start a markup of this. And I've not started the clock rolling on any of, you know, there's due dates and stuff to actually implement an ordinance. I've not started the clock on any of those, but um, I think we should start working on it. And then, you know, within a month or so, maybe you get further along that we think about, you know, start holding the public hearings or something. And even just, you know, the, I don't see the threat of this, but, you know, if it gets out there that we're working on this, it might uh, prompt the uh, property owners to be a little bit more proactive in cleaning things up. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just like, you know, the gas station yesterday next to, you know, the abandoned gas station next to the Union Bank yesterday, there's somebody hanging out behind there, you know, and that, that's been built vacant for, what, 10 years now or Close 8 to 10 time. years. I mean, there should be nobody there. When, there's somebody hanging around out back. So. You know, they have done work there as far as removal of Oh, I'm tanks. sorry, the, uh, there's that sandwich shop in there for a while. There, there was, was a sandwich shop for a while. Superheroes of some sort, or whatever mm -hmm. that was. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's been like that for a while. Mm -hmm. And it shows. Well, thank you for your yeah. efforts. I concur with what you just described in terms of us having a chance to look through what you've pulled together and additionally what you'll have for us. Anything you'd like to add, Carla? Okay, what were you going to say? I, and I think it's worth, you know, as, as we move along, uh, have a chat with Joe Walsworth and, and maybe even code enforcement from St. J. That would be great. And, you know, just, you know, because uh, I think it's the town manager in St. John's Street, so they've had some success with it. Um, but, you know, seeing what uh, hurdles they face and how they've, uh, Conquered them and mm -hmm. what works and doesn't work. And you said St. Johnsbury mirrors theirs according From to the Barry city. Barry? Yeah. Okay. Very good. As I say, best practices. Exactly. It's not plagiarism. Best, it's best practices. Best practices. It's wonderful.
Thank you so much. Sounds good. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes, yes we can. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. I, I think that's a good idea. Thank you, Carla. So no motion required and we'll Correct. go that route and that's wonderful and thanks for all your efforts. Okay, next up on the agenda is the CWSRF, DWSRF, authorization appointments, replace, I've written over it, so it's Conti and Isabel. Uh, so this is for the Clean Water State Revolving Funds and Drinking Water State Revolving Funds. Um, we get several oh. financing opportunities through them. Uh, they're just requesting an update into the key personnel involved in these projects, uh, replacing Vince Conti with me and replacing Diane Isabel with Callie Streeter as the treasurer. Excellent. And so I recommend approval. Do I hear a second? I mean, or a would second. you like to make the motion? I'll second his recommendation. Very well. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. And next up on the agenda is the licenses, permits, vouchers, applications, warrants, approval. There should be a whole stack of stuff to approve. You want the payroll warrants? Do it all. Just okay. do it all in one. All right. Make a motion to approve payroll warrants 25-05 for payroll for August 25th, 2024 to September 7th, 2024 to be paid on September 11th, 2024 in the amount of $67,092.76. Payable warrant 25G5 with, pay, uh, with check numbers 24257 to 24298 in the amount of $38,576.74. And general journal entries of August for August. Do we hear a second? Carla, are you a little second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And now we'll move I re on. I review the invoices before they even get sent to the treasurer, so I gotcha. try to stay out of that because <laughs> anything in there has already gone through me so that makes total sense and um, now we'll move on to the approval of the minutes we've got two sets here first is August 19th 2024 do I hear a motion to approve the August 19th 2024 minutes as presented and, I, and I've made a few updates corrections to these from what was sent out on Friday I move to approve the minutes of August 19, 2024. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And the next minutes is the September 2nd, 2024 meeting. We just got these today. Um, I've made a few, so you've not seen them before. I made a few uh, corrections on them myself already. I haven't looked at them. Sorry. Shall we table the September 2nd, 2024 minutes till everyone's had a chance to review them? Yeah, because I know Carla hasn't seen them. Please. Oh, please. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay, we'll put that on the next agenda for those minutes, September 2nd, 2024. And now we'll go into roundtable. Carla, anything for roundtable tonight? Jeez, uh, nope. Okay. <laughs> I'm in Kansas City, so I can't really, I just barely walked in the room. I can't think of anything. No worries. Have a good trip. Anything, Joe? Thanks. Um, no, thank you. No? Okay, and tour? I do have a couple things. Um, Renee Evans of Crosstown Road started today as the assistant town clerk. Uh, so we're happy to have her started. She was her name? today was uh, Renee, Evans. Renee Evans, and today was her first day. And this, as far as I know, she's coming back tomorrow. Welcome to Renee. That's wonderful. Uh, then another thing. 
those public meetings. That I had, uh, I guess I'm going to get on my soapbox. Don't roll your eyes at me, Joe. Um, the town clerk received a supply of Narcan today that apparently the health department is sending to all the town clerk's offices that they're worried that this baloney idea of universal vote by mail, that ballots are going to start coming in now laced with powders and stuff. So they're worried about the safety of the election workers to the effect that we need to have Narcan on hand. I have asked the health department and the Secretary of State's office today that, well, if you're that worried about it, why don't you provide us some gloves as well? And I've not heard back from them yet. But if they don't, we'll be buying some mm -hmm. gloves. And I've told the town clerk today I don't want anybody handling ballots without at least wearing gloves, if not even more. So. Mm -hmm. This great, this great idea of universal vote by males and also causing a lot more money that they didn't anticipate. Right. Thank you for making so, us aware. I guess that's what I call a stupid idea. Was there any awareness before they were received here in the office? Not that I know of. Uh, not that I uh, heard of. I mean, they, I mean, they, I had not they gave a little cover day. letter and instructions and stuff. Mm -hmm. and I guess we're going to have a couple of video training sessions, what you know, webinar type training sessions. But thank you for reaching another, out and for keeping us surprised. Another great idea. Yeah, I had no knowledge. I didn't either until I got the email from the town clerk. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. How about that first of the two um, informational meetings with the town? On the thirtieth, I believe, Riverton. Twenty ninth or thirtieth. Uh, there should be an ad going out uh, next week in both the World and the Times Argus. What time it's of day? It's that Monday um, at six thirty at the Riverton Fire Station. Uh, the thirtieth. It is the thirtieth. So that'll be on our Berlin website and front page forum and Times Argus and other I locations. Cannot guarantee the town website because we don't have a website person right now. That's right. You have said that before. And then the second session will be on Tuesday, October 29th at the Four Corners Fire Station. Same time? 6 30. Yes. Thank you so much. Is that about the merger? Yes. Okay, thanks. Thank you for asking that, Carl. Okay, if there's nothing else for roundtable, um, is there any need for an executive session this evening? There is, and this is going to be a two-parter. Um, I move to find that premature public knowledge concerning the po police union contract will place the town at an unfair advantage. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion And then carries. I move to enter into executive session pursuant to 1 VSA 313A3 for personnel and 1 VSA 313A1B for police union contract. And I do expect action to occur afterwards. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. We are now in executive session.